Andy, first of all, the result. We spoke yeah. a little while yeah. about um, belief and, and getting the players their belief. So yeah. what sort of belief does it take to go and win a game in the last minute? I think it, it shows that, they've, um, that they're getting somewhere with, with what, what we're trying to do. I thought that the, um, they probably, at times today, were second best, our team. I think um, we, we didn't start the game well. Um, first 10 minutes and then we, we took control of the game, went in at half time 1-0 up and I thought maybe maybe the half time whistle come too early for us, I thought we were um, dominating the game, creating a lot of chances and um, just struggling to get that second goal and then um, obviously we know that, that no two halves are the same and they were a lot better than our second half, uh, obviously the conditions didn't help either with the with the win but um, ultimately we've, we've won the game. Uh, talk us through what it's like to play in conditions like that because obviously the people who are watching might not understand yeah. the wind was just it was yeah and it was we, we actually found it easier um playing against the wind so um i mean I, I play for a sunday league team as well in birmingham so if you get the wind with you everyone just shoots <laughs> from everywhere and you, everyone wants to play with him but it's actually easy to play against the wind because um you know when you do pass it forward it doesn't run out of play and and you're, you're able to judge your passes a lot easier um and both teams found it easier like i say to play play against the wind did it take did it take almost every player sort of 10 15 minutes to try and work out what the conditions were going to be definitely, like definitely yeah and i think um we we struggled to get out of, the, out of our half first half just because of the way that they were playing they pushed right up against us and we were you know the way we play we still want to pass it so um you know we don't we don't want to encourage the players to play long but there was times when they could have just turned it around uh in behind them because they were pushed up that high and we perhaps could have had a had an opportunity to get up the pitch a little bit more, but we we kept persevering with with our passing game and it paid off. Did you do anything differently to sort of to to turn that dodgy first 10 15 minutes around? No, they just the the players just kept playing. They kept playing. They they uh, they got a grip of the conditions. They started moving the ball quicker and we started passing through. And I think um, it's just the, the the belief that they've got in the in the system and uh, and obviously having a couple of first team players as well playing with them helps. Um, the penalty just before half time that, that Jack yeah. Bonham saved, how big a moment was that in the game? I think it was um, important, it was just, just before half time. So the fact that we've we've um, you know we were well on top of the game at that time and um, you know unfortunately we've we've had a counter attack and he's tried to cross it and it's literally it Josh from two yards and obviously the, the rules have changed now that um, if he does strike your hand in the penalty box the referee um, is quick enough to, to give the penalty but uh, great save and um, it was good to go in one nil. Is there anything you could have done about QPR's goal? Um, yeah, we could have. Yeah, we could have defended better. Um, I thought. I thought Marcos could. Um, he could have got tighter in midfield, and then Rafa. Um, you know, he, he made the decision to come out and, and, and tackle the lad. where maybe he could have could have dropped off, and um, ultimately it was it was two or three players rather than rather than one person's fault. Um, but you know, you, you you always you always look to see that you could have you could have stopped the goal. You got the winner at the end very late on through the way that Brentford liked to play, press the ball high yeah. up the pitch, win it back and turn it into chances. Definitely, yeah, we we done that two or three times in the in the first half and um Kev O'Connor who was who was helping me today spoke about that at half time that um that we need to be clinical when we got that chance and it was just um you know, it was it was just good that it fell to Patino, it was good, good for his confidence and he and he finished it nicely. How how would you judge it as a performance overall? I thought it was okay. You know, I wouldn't get carried away with it. I mean, uh, you know, if, if you look at the league table, the bottom of the league have beat top of the league today. But um, I think maybe a draw would have been a fair result. Um, I thought, like I say, I thought we we edged it first half, and they were they were a stronger team second half. Um, you know, the, the the keepers kicked one off the line as well in the in the last almost the last kick of the game from one of our counter attacks. So. Uh, we, you know, we could have quite easily been coming in here three one up. Uh, what would it do for the confidence of your group to have won two games in, in the space of a week? I think it's good for them. I think it's good for them. I mean, you know, we, we spoke about having habits, and, and un unfortunately, we got into the habit of losing and, and accepting that they were going to lose. Um, and it's it's good that they've they've got a bit of confidence now. They started off with a with a draw against Colchester, which maybe they, they you know they should have won that game and then beat Bristol comfortably and beat. QPR today, we were top of the league, so it's, um, you know, it, I, I, don't, I don't try to look too much at the results, but, um, you know, as a player, they definitely will be looking at the results and looking at the form table and, and things like that, and it's good for their confidence. So in that case, what have you seen in terms of development over the past week or so? I'm seeing that um, Courtney Senior is a threat, like we've like we, we seen. I've seen that today I learned that Josh Clark can play right back, similar to Mo, has been playing in the first team. Um, Montel was a threat. Um, Jermaine's got a goal, 
which which I'll do is confidence to the world are good. Um, I think Jack Bonham's a, a real um, prospect as well in goal. Um, so a lot of positives. Uh, finally, you're starting to build, as I say, in terms of development. You're seeing these things, yeah. results are coming, and you've still got a couple more games before Christmas to build on it. Definitely, yeah. I mean, we've got um, we organised the game last Friday. Uh, gives give me a chance to see some of the lads that haven't played for the development squad, and also some of the the scholars that weren't involved on, on for their for their game on Saturday. Um, I've organised another game this Friday beyond closed doors against Chelsea, so that's going to be a test. So um, it's good though that these type of games that I want, I don't want to, you know, um, we went to Ashford Town on Friday, played at a non-league ground with non-league facilities, with a, on a terrible pitch, which is something that they're, you know, it's part of the development that they're going to have to learn to deal with. Um, and, you know, to the other extreme now on Friday, we're all taken to Chelsea, that have got the best facilities in, in England, so it's, um, it's all part of the development.